Okay, everybody, it's over in the evening of the day. And as you know from another video, my daughter Rebecca and I went foraging for wild grapes. And so I want to show you what I'm going to do with those wild grapes. The sun's shining in the window here on us, and uh, the sun will be going down in just a little bit. I've got on these old clothes because if I, if I get any of the juice, any of the wild grape juice on me, I don't want to get it on good clothes. So it doesn't matter if juice gets on these clothes. And the juice from the wild grapes is a dark purple, and it will stain your clothes. But let me turn the camera around here, and I'm going to show you I've got my wild grapes in the sink, and they need to be rinsed off good. So I've got them right here in some water. Here they are. And I'm going to just swish them around some, rinse them good, and then I'm going to transfer them over to the other side of the sink and do that again. So let me run some water in this other side of the sink. We want to make sure that we get all of the all of the uh, dirt off of them if there is any dirt. And there's just some little there's a little debris on them, and we want to make sure that we get all of that off of there because we don't want that to go into our jam. Okay, so we can turn it back around here where you can see what I'm doing. Okay, I've got water running in the other side of the sink, and I'm just going to start putting these over into the other side of the sink. Rebecca and I found a lot of these wild grapes here just a few days ago. They're very plentiful this year. And so we got us a good mess of grapes picked here. Now, like I told you in the other video, but if you haven't watched that other video, these wild grapes, they have, they have several names. Uh, my dad taught us kids to call these wild grapes bullises. So that's what we've always called them coming up. Uh, so bullises or wild grapes or muscadines. That's all names for this wild grape. Okay, I've just about got these out of this side. I'm seeing just a little bit of debris here that's come off of the grapes. trying to take advantage of the grapes being plentiful this year and pick them and use them and not let them go to waste. Okay, going to let this water out of this side of the sink, swish these grapes around over here on this side. Then we're going to do this again. We'll fill this side of the sink up with water. So we want to rinse them several times and I'm told that you can see that there's no dirt left in the bottom of the sink when the water drains out. Then you'll know that they're clean. Okay, let me put the stopper in. Let's transfer them back. This is looking good. I think this will be the last time that we have to rinse them. So that means that we have rinsed them three times to get them good and clean.
Take that some water out. Okay, so what we're going to do now, so I've got a big pot here. I'm going to bring this pot over here, set it right here, and I'm going to put these grapes in this pot. What I'm going to have to do is I'm putting the grapes in this pot, and I'm going to add some water, and we're going to put these grapes on the stove and let them cook a little bit so that they will be tender. And then we're going to get the juice and the pulp out of the grapes and we'll discard the, uh, the peeling and the seeds. All we want is the juice and the pulp. Okay, yeah, this looks great. I'm trying to estimate how much grapes I actually have here. Um, I think I probably have close to a gallon of grapes here. Okay, here we go. Now, we want to add some water to the pot, and I'm going to add the water just up as high as the grapes come in the pot. Okay. We've got the grapes covered with water now. And so I'm going to take this pot and we'll set it on the stove, turn the eye on and let these grapes start cooking. Okay, so I've got my pot with my grapes and water on the stove here. And I'm going to turn the eye on right here. I'm gonna turn it on almost high. Not quite high, and we're going to let this water heat up and tenderize these grapes where we can get the juice out of the grapes easily and where that uh, the, the peel will be soft and it will be easy to get the pulp out. And here I have a big pot with water in it. And I have, this is what I'm going to sterilize my jars in, is this big pot of water. This is a canning rack. I'll put that down in the pot. And that is for my jars to sit on. And that keeps them off of the bottom of the pot so that they don't get too hot and break. So uh, the bubbles bubbling up off the pot just shake the jars around and cause them to break or something. So I've got my canning rack in. Got my little jars here. I've already washed them. So I'm just going to go ahead and set them in here. And we're going to turn this on as well and get these jars sanitized while the grapes are cooking. Can you see that? Me putting the jars in there. Okay, yeah. Now you want your jars to be covered up with water completely covered up with water. I'm trying to see if I can put one more jar in here. Let's see if I can put one more jar in here. Yeah, I can put one more jar in here. Okay, so you want your jars to be completely covered up with water. And we'll turn this burner on about the same, just right below high. We need these jars to come, uh, we need this water to come to a boil we want to boil these jars for about five minutes and that will sanitize them and then we'll get them out and put them on a towel on the counter and then they'll be ready to fill with jelly.
Okay, the grapes are boiling. You should be able to see the bubbles and stuff there. I'm going to go ahead and turn this burner off. And I'm going to let the grapes just sit here on the burner while the burner cools off. Put a lid on them. And in a little bit, after they cool off some, we'll start getting the juice and the pulp out of the grapes. And back here, there's the cans or the jars there being sanitized. They're starting to boil. And so we've still got a few more minutes on that. But we'll get back with you in a little bit. All right, so I've got everything set up here to get the juice and the pulp out of the grapes. And so I'm going to turn this camera around where you can see what I'm doing here on the counter. I've got the grapes right back here in the pot that I boiled them in. And I've got a couple of bowls here and a little strainer. And so I'm going to get these grapes up, put them through this little strainer, and we're going to strain out the juice in the pulp. This is going to take a little time to do this because we've got this whole big pot to work with. But I'll show you what I'm doing and I won't keep the camera running the whole time that I'm doing this because this is going to take several minutes to go through this process here. And once I get it done, then I'll come back I'll show you our juice and our pulp, and it will be ready to actually make into jelly. And this is our dark grape juice here that's coming out of the bullises. Okay, now that I have processed the fruit and gotten the juice and the pulp, out of the fruit, we are ready to start the jelly making process. And I have to get all of my ingredients measured out and ready so that I can put it all together quickly and I'm not having to scramble for this or that. I've got everything over here. I've got my ingredients. I've got all of the little tools and everything that I'll need to use. Now I'm going to use to make this jelly, I'm going to use Sure Gel and that probably is reading backwards to you here on the video. This is a box of Sure Gel, and I'm going to go by the jelly recipe that is in this box of Sure Gel in the directions. You can either make jam or you can make jelly, and it can be cooked or it can be freezer. So we're going to make cooked jelly. And I know you may be thinking, well, now you've got pulp. It's not just juice, but you have pulp with the juice, and that is true. But the jam recipes call for chopped or crushed fruit and that's not what I have. I have juice with a little bit of pulp in it. So we're going to go by the jelly recipe so that I can have so that my jelly will set well and it will not be too liquid or too watery, too runny. If I go by the jam recipe, I'm afraid that's what will happen that my uh, jelly will not set well. So I've got, I've got my, let me turn the camera here. I've got my sterilized jars right here in this pot. I need to get them out. So I'm going to get them out, turn them upside down over here and just let them kind of drain a little bit, drain some of the water out while I'm actually cooking the jelly here in a few minutes. Now this recipe that I'm going by says that I should make, that one recipe will make eight half pint jars of jelly. So that's what the recipe is telling me. And, and I'm still getting the jars out here while I talk to you. And so I have 12 cups when I got through with uh, crushing or, or getting the juice and the pulp out of the bullises, 
I had 12 cups of juice and pulp. And one recipe calls for, I believe it's, it's five cups of juice. So I have 12 and I added three cups of water to my juice and to my pulp to bring my total amount of cups up to 15. It's okay if you add a little water to it, especially because this, um, this grape juice is so concentrated until it doesn't matter if you water it down just a little bit. So I added three cups that brought my total amount of cups up to 15. That means that I can make three recipes of this jelly, which means I'm going to come out with 24 half pints of jelly. So that's going to be, to me, that's going to be a lot uh, to have gotten from the grapes that I picked. So I'm going to be very happy with that. Okay, so I've got my jars. They're over here, turned upside down. There's my juice right there. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is I need to measure out my sugar for one recipe. So let me move this pot back over on the stove because I'm going to use this same pot to sterilize or to, um, it's not sterilize, but to, let's see, I done forgot what you call it, to, um, I'm going to process them. I'm going to give them a water bath. That's what it is. I couldn't remember what it was there for a minute, but I'm going to use this same pot that to give my jars of jelly a water bath in. So I'm going to set this back over on the stove. And over here I've got my, I've got a bowl and I've got my sugar. So I need seven cups of sugar. So I'm going to measure out seven cups of sugar in this bowl and you want to already have it measured out because when it comes time to put the sugar into your uh, jelly, you need to be able to just go ahead and pour it all in there. And it's good to have your ingredients already measured out and ready to go. Okay, two. I don't want to lose count here. Three. Four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so that's got our seven cups of sugar measured out. And I'm going to move this sugar container out of the way just so I'll have more room over here. All right, our sugar's right here and ready to go. I've got my Sure Gel. I've got to have one pack of Sure Gel, so I'm going to go ahead and get it out, have it ready to go. Okay, I'm not going to open it yet, but there it is. Now, around over here, I've got my juice in that bowl. There's my 15 cups of juice. Here's my ju uh, my pot. I'm going to measure out five cups of juice. I'm going to kind of stir it up a little bit because the pulp has probably settled to the bottom. And when I get to my third batch of jelly, I don't want to just have pulp. So I'm stirring it up. Let's get five cups of juice out of here. four. One more will be five. Make sure your measurements 
or even to the top of your measuring cup so that you have a correct measurement. That's five. Okay. All right. Now the next thing we're going to need to do is set this pot on a burner. And turn on the heat. All right. Now our sure gel needs to go in there. I'm going to stir it while I pour it in. Trying to do this where you can see what I'm doing. Okay, I've got my sure gel in there. Heat's going to go on almost high. The uh, directions say to turn your heat on high, but I turn it just right below high because if you have good pots that you're cooking with, if you turn them on high, you can mess up the, the bottom of your pot. If it's like a tri-ply uh, bottom on it or something like that, if you get your heat too high and the directions say don't turn your heat on high for those pots, and if you get it too high, those that tripod can come apart. And actually, I had a pot that done that one time. So I just keep it just right below high, just to protect my pot. Okay, I'm just stirring this up. It's going to take a few minutes for it to begin to boil, and that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to heat this juice and sure gel up until it comes to a boil. So we're just going to let it wait to boil there. And today we're having a, a bit of a cooler day. It's been really hot here in South Alabama. Uh, we're in August, but we're also in some of the most active time for hurricanes, and we actually have two tropical storms in the Gulf now. We've got Tropical Storm Marco, and then we've got Tropical Storm Laura, and they're headed for the Gulf Coast. So uh, our weather has been a little cooler today, a little overcast. We're beginning to get a little wind every once in a while. It's not steady, but every once in a while we'll have a little wind come through here and a little rain. So it looks like we're going to get a little bit of wind and rain off of Marco. Marco's the first one coming in, and we'll get a little wind and rain off of him, it looks like. Uh, we're going to be on the east side of the storm, and the east side is the worst side because a hurricane, it rotates counterclockwise. So... The, the right side of the hurricane, that's where, that's where the, as it approaches the, the shore, that's where the uh, strongest wind will be is on the right side because it's coming off of the storm, off of the water. It's the first to hit land. So that's the bad side of the storm. And it looks like we'll be on the bad side of the storm of both of these hurricanes or they're actually tropical storms. So it, they're predicting Laura to become a hurricane. And so, but they're predicting them to come in somewhere along the Louisiana, Texas line. So we won't get a direct hit here in South Alabama, but we'll get some wind and rain off of it. So anyway, that's, um, that's what we have to be prepared for down here in the south where I live is the hurricanes. That's a real common thing for us to have to prepare for. And like I said, we are in some of the most active time of the hurricane season. August and September are the most active times for the hurricane season. So I don't know you know, whether there'll be any other hurricanes after this, but we do have two now. 
coming in. And that's, I've never seen that before. I've never seen it where we had two hurricanes in the Gulf at the same time. So that's unusual. But the, uh, the juice here, let me look at it and see. Okay, it's not boiling yet. So I'm going to stop the video for right now. And once the juice comes to a boil, I'll turn it back on and let you see what I'm doing. Okay, my juice is boiling now. And I have a spatula to start with to scrape the bottom of the pot to keep it from sticking. So it's time to put our seven cups of sugar in. So here's our seven cups of sugar. I'm just going to pour that in. And we need to stir this all up. Got to get this sugar all stirred up in the juice and got to get it melted. And we've got to let this come to a full rolling boil. And we'll boil it for one minute. This is really a very simple process using the Sure Gel. If you just go by the recipe and the Sure Gel, it turns out really good. I'm supposed to stir this the whole time now that I have the sugar in it uh, until it comes to the full rolling boil. I just saw some sugar. Yeah, here's a lump of sugar that's not dissolved. Get that. Okay. Okay, so it will take, oh, I still got some sugar here. Let's see. Here it is. Here's a lump of sugar. I'm just bringing it up to the side of the pot and just kind of smashing it and then putting it back down in the juice. Okay, so it's going to take a minute or two for this to boil. And then once it boils, starts boiling, we will let it boil for one minute. Okay, so my jelly is starting to boil. It's supposed to come to a full rolling boil. So we're almost there. Once it starts boiling like it needs to, I'm going to go over to the microwave and turn on my timer and uh, time it for one minute. Okay, here we go. It's about to do it. Okay, it's boiling good. Let me go turn on my timer. Okay, I've got my timer going for one minute. And once the timer goes off, we will be ready to put this jelly in some jars. I don't know if you can see the bubbles and how it's boiling here. It's boiling really nicely. We're just waiting on the timer now. Just stirring it a little bit every once in a while. I don't want it to stick on bottom. You see all of these bubbles? It is really, really boiling now. It's good. All right, there goes my timer, that's one minute. Let's get it off of the burner. Put it over here on a little hot pad. Let me turn my video around where you can see over here what we're doing. 
Okay, here we are. Now, I'm going to need to skim the foam off of the top of this. We don't want the foam going into the jars. See the foam there? I'm going to skim that off. Get me a spoon. Start working on that. I'll just put it in this little bowl right here that I have. kind of tilt my pot so that I can scrape all this foam over to one side. Skim it off. Putting it in that little bowl that I showed you a while ago. We almost got it. And once we've got this off, we're going to put it in the jars. And then I will do this two more times. I will go through this process two more times. And then I will have approximately 24 half pint jars of wild grape jelly. And that is going to be so delicious on some hot biscuits. Okay, so I've got the foam pretty much skimmed off of there. Let me set this to the side. And we're ready to start filling our jars. Got some juice kind of here on the counter. Let me get that up. Okay, so we want to turn a jar over. Put this little funnel on it, and uh, I've showed you this funnel before when I was making pear preserves. This is a little metal funnel. If you go to buy a funnel uh, nowadays in the store, you're going to get a plastic funnel. You're not going to get a metal funnel. And this was my granny's, and this is what she used when she made jelly. This was my granny Cochran, my dad's mom. It belonged to her. So this is one of the little keepsakes that I have, and I really enjoy using it. I have, a, I have a plastic funnel. Well, I actually threw it away and I kept Granny's metal funnel and it get, brings back good memories of my Granny and she used to make wild uh, grape jelly as well and when I was when I was a young you know in my early teens and on up uh, in my late teens she knew that I really liked the wild grape jelly. So she had a little vine there growing on her fence and she would pick those and she would make me some wild grape jelly. And so now I'm making wild grape jelly like my granny and I'm using her funnel. All right, so let's, let's start filling these jars. This, might, this can be kind of messy let me see if I can kind of pull this around a little bit, make it a little easier. Let me rearrange everything. My lids, get them out of the way. Okay, let me put this right here where you can see it. Here we go. Okay, I've got a one cup measurer here, and we're going to start filling the jars up. You want to leave a little space at the top. Don't want to fill it all the way up to the top. You need to leave a little space at the top so that it has room to seal, for the lid to seal on it. Wipe your, wipe your jar off really good. Put a lid on it. And get a ring. Screw the ring on it. 
and set it to the side. So we've got that one. Let's do another one. And we'll just continue to do this until I have all of my jelly poured up in jars. don't want to go on here or this ring. There we go. I got it. Got the ring on. I should have put a little saucer over here to set this on. Let me see if I've got one. Okay, here we go. I'm put a saucer there to set this measuring cup on. I'm making a mess on the towel. You have to make sure that the sides of the jar where the little where, it's, where the rim screws on and the actual top edge of the jar right here, the threads of the jar, that's what it's called right there. You have to make sure all of that is wiped down clean and dry so that you don't have to worry about your jar not sealing, uh, some kind of contamination getting in it. Or something like that. I forgot to put the put the funnel on that one, but I was pouring pretty good. Didn't mess anything up. Okay, we've got four already filled up, so we should be able to come up with about four more. Usually when I make this jelly, I will come up with a, a little extra left over. It usually makes just a little bit more than what it says. And I can see the jelly over here that is on this on this little saucer. As it's cooling down, it is already setting. And it looks like we're not going to have any problem with the jelly setting and being of a good texture. So that's great. See what have we got? Two, four, six. This is number six. I usually try to have at least one jar extra sanitized and ready to go in case it makes more than what the recipe said. Okay, two, four, six, seven. This is going to be number eight, so let's see what we got left over here. And I've still got jelly in here. Okay, there's my extra jar right here. So I kind of may need it. All 
right, so I've got my eight half pints, but I still have jelly in this pot. So let's go ahead and pour it out. Get all the jelly out, we'll put it in this jar. Just pouring it out of the pot now into the jar. Okay, we're actually, this is making us another jar full of jelly. So I'm coming out with nine half pints uh, from this recipe. The recipe said I would get eight. I'm getting nine with a little extra left over. So this little extra that's left over, I'm going to put it in a little bowl or in a little jar and I will just put that in my refrigerator and that's what we can start eating on. So I've got nine half pints. I've still got just a little bit of jelly in there. See, that'll be enough just to put in a little bowl in my refrigerator. Okay, now the next thing we're needing to do is I want to tighten down the lids on these jars. And I'm taking a towel to do that because the jars are really hot. They've got the hot jelly in them. So I'm going to take a jar and hold it with this towel that I have doubled over. Hold the bottom like that. Grab it with the top and tighten it down. Okay. All right, now that I need to give them a water bath. I've got my pot over on the stove with the water in it. So I've got my, I've got my tongs here. They will hold the jars. They grasp and hold the jars just like that. And I'm going to start transferring them all over to this pot that's on the back right here. And once I get them all in there, then I will start the, I will start the, once I get them all in there and get them to boiling, I'm going to let them boil for 10 minutes and that will be their water bath. Then I can take them out, set them on the counter, and we'll listen for the caps to start popping, showing that they have sealed. My jelly has been in the water bath for 10 minutes, so it's ready to take out of the, out of the pot and set on the counter. I already got a few of the jars out, I'm getting the rest of them out. And I'm putting them right over here. I just heard one of the jars pop. One of them just sealed. Well, that's good. So that's where I'm setting them over on a towel on the counter. I'm going to let them cool down. You need to sit on the counter for 24 hours before you put them up. And I have two more recipes of this to make before I'm done today. I'm very happy with the results of my foraging for the wild muscadines. It's been very profitable and very fruitful. <laughs> and that's a pun. <laughs> All right, this is my last jar. Thank y'all for being with me and watching what I was doing. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I've really enjoyed making it. And Melody and Kim and Kathy, my friends in Oklahoma, 
I saw on Facebook where y'all were making some jams, maybe some peach and I'm not sure what else. And it, I thought it would be so neat if we lived close enough to each other to where we could trade out some of our jellies. But anyway, I've been thinking about y'all while I was making this video. We'll see y'all next time. Y'all be good.